Whale sharks are one of my very favourite sharks. They look so chilled and their coloration is simply stunning. They are the largest shark at about 12 metres in length. The largest whale shark was measured at a whopping 18.8 metres long. They are a pelagic species and are believed to spend most of their lives in deep offshore waters, travelling large distances and can be found in all tropical and warm temperate seas except the Mediterranean. They are solitary creatures, however it is well documented that juvenile whale sharks aggregate seasonally at about 25 sites off the coasts of countries such as Australia, Belize, the Maldives and Mexico. More on this later. Recent research on their mitochondrial DNA has shown that there are two subpopulations of whale sharks. There is a subpopulation in the Indo-Pacific Ocean which consists of 75% of the total population of whale sharks and the other subpopulation lives in the Atlantic Ocean and makes up the remainder, 25% of the total population. Whale sharks are ovoviviparous, that is the eggs hatch inside the mother and then they are birthed live. In 1995, a pregnant female was caught off the coast of Taiwan and dissected. Inside the uterus, an amazing 300 embryos were found. Many were at different stages of development, with some being in their egg cases, while others had already emerged. From this, it is thought that female whale sharks can store the male's sperm and then selectively fertilize her eggs over a prolonged period. It is thought that when the pups are born, they are between 40 to 60 centimeters in length. Very little is known about where whale sharks are born or spend their time in their first years. Scientists are keen to find their pupping grounds so as to better protect and monitor the offspring of these graceful giants. Scientists who are part of the Galapagos Whale Shark Project are very excited as they have estimated that as many as 98% of individuals that pass through the marine reserve are female. They are mature and many appear to be pregnant, which could mean that their birthing grounds are relatively close by, the discovery of which would be very important. However, a paper published earlier this year reports on a study that was carried out on whale sharks in the Galapagos that were thought to be pregnant and found that they were not. The whale sharks had post-pelvic distension and it was thought that they were pregnant. Instead, it is now thought that these humps might be a secondary sex characteristic of mature females. Ultrasound images of the suspected pregnant whale sharks were obtained using a portable ultrasound diagnostic imaging system. Using divers with underwater jetpacks, ultrasound images were obtained using a portable ultrasound diagnostic imaging system. Blood samples were also taken from either the pelvic fin or the first dorsal fin and these also indicated that the females were not pregnant. It is hoped that this technique can be used on whale sharks in different locations and seasons to help increase scientific understanding of the reproductive biology of these majestic animals. Whale sharks are filter feeders and feed upon both phytoplankton and zooplankton as well as spawn of various corals, fish and invertebrates. They also eat slightly larger prey such as small crustaceans, schooling fishes and occasionally on tuna and squid. To be able to capture the plankton, they have a unique bit of anatomy in their mouths. Next to the pharynx, there are 20 filtering pads. There are 10 on each side of the pharynx, with 5 on the lower surface and 5 on the upper surface. These pads are made up of denticle covered reticulated mesh with irregular shaped holes which water can pass through. On average, the pads give an overall area of 11,303 cm squared. They are able to trap all organisms above 2 to 3 mm in diameter. These filtering pads enable the shark to sift through an average of 20,723 grams of plankton a day. In order to filter feed, water enters the open, elliptical mouth, which can open to around 1.5 meters, and it passes into the pharynx, where the water is then filtered and passes out of the shark through the external gill slits. There are different methods in which the whale shark is able to get their food into their mouths. One is by subsurface passive feeding, whereby the shark swims slowly at around 0.2 to 0.5 meters per second below the surface 
and with the mouth wide open, filtering the food from the water. Another feeding method is called surface ram filter feeding. In this method, they swim a little faster at around 0.3 to 1.5 meters per second, with their body inclined at approximately 13 degrees upwards and their open mouth partially or totally submerged. The dorsal surface of the head and usually the dorsal fin and upper lobe of the caudal fin is exposed. It is thought that this angle allows a bit of lift to be generated by the ventral body surface and pectoral fins, allowing the sharks to keep their mouths open at the surface at low speeds. The sharks will repeatedly turn to stay in any particular dense patches of plankton that they find. Whale sharks have also been observed to feed using a method called stationary suction feeding. Where there is a high density of plankton, whale sharks swim directly towards the area and then stop. They remain stationary in a horizontal position or a vertical one with their heads in the plankton. Then they open their mouths forcefully and suck in their prey. Remarkably, they have also been observed to lunge feed on schools of anchovy in Baja California, Mexico. On three separate occasions, whale sharks were seen to move simultaneously to encircle the school of anchovy and then either lunge simultaneously or one after the other into the school. They would accelerate into the school with their mouths open and with intense movements of their caudal fin. The authors of the paper describing this behaviour surmised that fish consumption could be more important than previously thought for whale sharks. In spite of being filter feeders, whale sharks have around 3,000 tiny teeth. They are found on a narrow plate on the inside of their bottom lip and are about the size of the top of a pencil. No one really knows why they have teeth and the general consensus is that they are vestigial structures. Another really cool thing about whale sharks is they have tiny teeth on their eyeballs. Their eyes are situated on the sides of their head and project out from their orbit making them quite vulnerable to damage from floating objects in the water. They have no eyelids or nicotating membrane to protect them, but they do have a mechanism where they can partially retract their eyeballs into their skulls, and they have dermal denticles on their eyeballs. These denticles are different from the denticles found on the whale shark's body and have an oak leaf-like appearance. Eye denticles are not found on any other shark, so it is a unique characteristic of theirs. Because whale sharks have relatively small eyes, scientists thought that their sense of vision was not as important as other senses are to them. However, the level of protection their eyes have indicates that this may not be the case. As previously mentioned, whale sharks are known to aggregate seasonally at about 25 sites globally. The whale sharks in these aggregations are mostly juvenile males. Studies that have tagged whale sharks have shown that they can dive to depths of 750 to 1000 metres, where it is believed they feed on zooplankton, squid and jellyfish. The aggregation sites have common features. They are all in areas of warm, shallow water in close proximity to a sharp seafloor drop-off into deep water. Researchers believe that these sites provide the ideal place for the sharks to search for food in both deep water and the warm shallows, and where they can bask near the surface and warm up their huge bodies. Whale sharks are ectotherms, so their body temperature is the same as the surrounding water. Research suggests that the large body size of whale sharks aids in preventing a decrease in body temperature during deep excursions to more than a thousand meters depth. However, they are still going to need to warm up a bit on their return to the surface. Whale sharks are drawn to these seasonal aggregation sites by a high density of their prey, plankton. At these sites, they are particularly vulnerable to capture, ship strikes and over-exploitation, such as fishing for shark fin soup. These sites need to be a focal point for conservation efforts to protect the whale shark, such as setting them up as marine protected areas having fishing restrictions, boat speed limits, and limited visitor numbers. Whale sharks are on the IUCN red list as endangered. Overall, the global population has declined by 50% over the last 75 years. During monitoring programs, 
Propeller injuries are commonly reported and they are known to be caught as bycatch in purse seine and gillnet fisheries. Another threat to them is microplastics. These have been detected in their scat, so they are definitely filtering it from the water column. How it is being assimilated by the animal's tissues and the subsequent effect on their health has yet to be determined. These magnificent sharks, like many other elasmobranchs, face many threats and decreasing numbers. Those of you that have been following my series Spotlight on Sharks and looked at the videos during Shark Week will notice how vitally important sharks are to the health of our oceans and there is a need to protect all sharks, in fact all marine life, as a matter of urgency before the damage we are doing is irreversible. If you have enjoyed this video then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends and don't forget to turn your notifications on. There are also many other videos about different sharks that you may be interested in seeing, as well as a couple of videos from Shark Week this year.